Paul Randall, and this is the demo that accompanies the extended events portion of the online MCM training. What I'm going to do in this demo is I'm going to set up a, an event session that's going to allow me to look and see what queries are executing that are taking up more than a certain amount of CPU time. So first off, I'm going to create a database to play around with. I'm going to call it production. And then I'm going to create a table, a couple of indexes, and insert some values in there. This is basically just setting up some data that I can then execute some queries on. Obviously, it's a contrived example. And I'm going to be able to, to uh, have an event session defined that allows me to look and see what uh, queries that I'm executing against the, this table are taking up a certain amount of CPU time. So my event session is going to have a predicate based on the database that's being executed against. So I'm going to select the database ID of this particular database, so it's 19, and I'm going to use that to plug in when I define my event session. So monitoring expensive queries, what are the different things that I can do? First of all, I can look at the list of extended events that there are using the um, sys.dmxe objects. DMV, and there's a whole bunch of different events that are defined. Obviously, there's 254, as I mentioned in the actual slides. And I want to have a look and see when a particular statement completes, so I can see um, whether that statement took up a certain amount of CPU time. So I'm going to look for SQL statement completed, and we can see there we can actually do it by um, stored procedure if we wanted to, but I'm going to look for SQL statement completed, and that's the event that I'm going to use in my event session. Now, for SQL statement completed, I can have a look and see what payload is captured when that event actually fires. In other words, what data is captured by that event. So I go ahead and run this. I can look at the XE object columns, DMV, and it's capturing a bunch of different stuff. The database ID, the object ID, object type, the amount of CPU that's been burned, the duration, the number of logical reads and writes that were issued. So this I can use to filter my events by having a predicate based on the CPU time. In terms of actions, I can have a look and see what actions there are, all kinds of different stuff that I can capture. And I'm going to capture the uh, plan handle, so I want to, there we are, there's plan handle there, so I can capture that. I could also grab the SQL text as well, but uh, plan handle is going to be good. And then how do I want to process these events? Um, say ring buffer, the various synchronous methods, various asynchronous methods. So I'm going to use a file target. Is there anything I can customize around the asynchronous file target? Um, the file name, the um, maximum number of files that I can have, the file size, and so on. So each of the different targets has a bunch of different things that you can um, set up about them to define how they're going to behave. So let's go ahead and put our session together. So first off, I'm going to make sure that if there was a session defined of that name, I'm going to drop it. So I'm creating my event session, and what it's going to do is I'm going to event, I'm going to watch this event the SQL statement completed event in the SQL Server package. And I want to make sure I'm going to grab the SQL text and the plan handle as an action. So whenever that event fires, if my predicate is met, then this particular action will go and fire. Now I need to make sure that I'm plugging in the right database ID. And remember we said it was uh, 19 for this database. So I'm going to go ahead and have that action only when the SQL statement completed and it ran in the database ID that I'm interested in and the number of milliseconds of CPU time was more than 10. I'm going to output everything to an asynchronous file target and I'm going to say that I want to make sure that everything gets flushed out um, at most every one seconds rather than waiting for the in-memory buffer to fill up. Now I need to have two file names here. So this is the file name that stores the actual events, and this is the file name that stores the description of the XML that represents each event. And remember that that's necessary because I've taken this predefined event SQL statement completed, and I've added in some extra actions. So what's captured is not just the vanilla SQL statement completed. I've actually changed the, um, the shape of what that event's going to look like when it's captured. So I'll go ahead and create my event session. 
And then what we can do is start the session up. Okay, we're in the production database. I'm going to go ahead and do some operations on that table that I created and then flip back into master. It's going to take a few seconds to run. A bunch of selects, an index rebuild, and index reorganize. So, did we capture any events that took more than 10 milliseconds? So we can select everything from our file target using this function, and we give it the name of our actual table. We give it well. We give it a wildcard file name that points to all of the files. Um, if we define any rollovers and we say where we want to start, where we want to end, in terms of which events. I want to look at all of the events. So, we, oh, we captured three events. That's good. So, this is going to show you how you need to get the information out. So, first off, it comes back as XML. So, if I just select everything and I don't do any further processing, what I'm going to get back is my three events, and they come back each as a an XML blob, if you will. If I click on it, then it'll render into the uh, XML format, and here's my event. Okay, so I need to programmatically extract inform information out of these XML events. So I do that using my X query, and what I've done is I've pulled everything out of the XML using the dot value to get all the different um, parts of that particular event that have fired. So you can read through this yourself. I'll leave it on the screen there for a second. You can have a read through, pause, and have a read and see what it's doing. So I'm going to go ahead and execute it now. And you can see what it's done is it's telling me the time that the particular event fired. So in other words, what time the SQL statement completed. For each of these three events, it captured the amount of milliseconds it took to run, it captured the duration, and it captured the actual SQL statement. So we could have a look and see the plan that executed. So I can have a look at this plan, grab the plan handle, stick it into this DMV. Oops. If I could control paste properly. And then if I click on this, it'll render me the graphical plan. So for instance, there's one of the, the plans that took um, more than 10 milliseconds. So I could have this kind of side process that's sitting waiting for these events to fire, and then I can actually have a look and capture the graphical plans for, for post-analysis. Pretty cool. So in the second part of the demo, well, first of all, what I want to do is I want to stop this event session, like so. In the second part of the demo, I'm going to define a um, another event session that's going to allow me to have a look and see what wait occurred when a particular statement is executing. So first off, I'm going to um, have a look and see what objects there are. So all of the different um, events that can fire, and there's one that allows me to see what waits have occurred. And this is right down at the bottom, and it's called um, wait info, wait info external. Now, these aren't part of the SQL Server um, package. We need to make sure we're getting the right package. So go back over here and execute this. So the wait info is in the SQL OS package rather than the SQL Server package. So let's have a look and see what columns there are that the wait info captures. So it captures a, uh, a wait type with this particular type name. So we're going to have to have a look and see what that type is. It captures an opcode. We're going to have to look and see what these opcodes are. And then we've got um, the duration of the event. And then for all the events of this particular type, 
this particular wait type, what the max is, the total is, uh, the signal wait time, and how many times it's fired. Now, for these particular um, for descriptions of what these things are, have a look at the weights and cues module where I explain all that. So what do these different um, types mean? So weight types is, okay, so weight types is all the different weights that can occur in the system. Again, look at the weights and cues module and you'll see um, descriptions of these and what they mean. And then the opcodes are when the event started, when the event finished. Okay, so when we started our wait for that particular resource and when our wait ended. So let's go and create our session. So we're going to create our monitor wait session. Now we need to get the session ID of the connection we're going to, we're going to run our query in. And this is over here. So first off, let's make sure we, we get everything out of memory. And our SPID is 52. So we're going to monitor on SPID 52. So we need to plug in our session ID here. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to look at all the weights that occur for session ID 52, and we're going to save it off into an asynchronous file target. So let's go ahead and create that. We start our event session. We go ahead and run our query. Okay, we go back over to our event session here. We stop our event session. This is a great way for being able to isolate the events that are occurring on a system for a particular query. So did we fire any, did we have any weights while we were doing our index rebuild? 1,542 different weights. That's pretty cool. So what we can do is, again, we can just select things out and we'll get one row, let's stop this, we'll get, oops, we'll get one row for each um, event that occurred, sorry, each wait that occurred. So we click on that and we can see there's a page out of that share wait, so we're waiting for a page to be read in from disk so that we can um, read it rather than change it. So to be able to do anything uh, really interesting with this, we're going to need to do some post-processing. So again, just like in the previous part of the demo, I've got a script that's going to extract all the parts of the wait events out nicely. So first of all, I'll run this and you can look at this code to see what it's doing. So for every event, it's pulling out, uh, it's going to cancel that, so it's going to do it for every every one of those. It's pulling out into a nice human readable form the uh, the weights that occurred. Okay, So you can see that some of these weights that occurred didn't actually have any duration. Um, some of them had quite a lot of duration though. So The interesting thing we can do, rather than looking at every single one of these events, is we can actually aggregate the events together. So let's aggregate over that set of events. Takes a few seconds to run. And what we can see is the various kinds of events that occurred. So we had some parallelism um, weights, we had some weights writing, waiting for us to write out information to our transaction log that was logging the index rebuild that we did. Um, we had uh, latches on in-memory structures that aren't pages, um, probably due to the sort that we were doing to do our rebuild, and we had some weights waiting for pages to be read in from disk as part of the read of the table to feed into the sort when we're creating our new index. Now, Again, this is a very interesting thing that we can do um, with extended events that you can't do with any other mechanism, which is isolating just the events, the, the, sorry, the weights that have occurred for one particular query on the system, rather than looking at with the um, SQL OS DMVs a snapshot of all the weights that are occurring across the entire system. So there's just a, a couple of demos there showing you the kind of things you can do with extended events and how they can be use, a, a very useful tool in performance troubleshooting very in-depth what's going on with SQL Server. Thank you.